In this tutorial I quickly explain how collections work. Collections are the underlying classes or pieces of code that manage your inventory, the skill bar, the bank, the character window, vendor, etc. Anything that contains items is basically an item collection. So here I have the inventory, which is a collection for the inventory. And by default it has a normal name and we can actually use references. When we use references, items reside in a different item collection, but can be displayed in this one. So it is actually useful for things like a skill bar, when you want to reference an item inside of the skill bar, even though the actual item is still in the inventory. We can ignore item layout sizes. Uh, this allows us to ignore the size of the item. So in the previous tutorial, we created items, and as you can see, we have our health potion. By default, it has an item size of one by one. Assuming we make the item size 2x2, two two, um, these will be placed in the inventory um, and they take up 2x2 two two size. Um, in our inventory we can actually say ignore item layout sizes and it will ignore the size of the item and it'll just consider every item to be of size 1. This can be useful for something like the skill bar, that way your Inventory can, can still contain items of any size, but as soon as you drag them into the skill bar, they will just be the size of one by one. We have the item button prefab. Here we can specify the slot we would like to use for this specific um, collection. Inside of our settings, we have the default item button prefab. This is automatically be set and you can swap this out if you like. And this will be used for all collections. However, if you want to override it on a specific collection, you can set it here, but by default, you most likely want to keep it empty. We have the container. This is where all of the items or the slots will actually be added into. So as you can see the grid we have here, as soon as I start the game, it will generate all of the items or the slots and fill up the grid. And we have manually defined collection. This allows us to not generate the items at runtime, but actually add them to the grid whenever we want to. As you can see, we have zero right now, and we can add them if we'd like. Uh, this can be useful for something like the character collection, where you want to specify the slots you have beforehand and not actually generate them at runtime. We have the sort button, which is invent the inventory specific. Uh, when clicked, it will sort the inventory and clean up uh, all of the items inside of it, uh, rearrange and uh, re-add stacks. The scrolling rect, which is just for uh, the inventory as well. We have the is shared collection. This allows us to share this inventory between multiple players. So assuming you have three, four, five characters, um, you might want to create a single inventory that is shared between all of those players. We have the priority. This specifies which collection is considered first when picking up an item. So assume you have two collections, two inventories as we do here. Just grab them here. We have two inventories. Assuming we have the consumable inventory here, consumable inventory here. When you pick up an item, the collection with the highest priority, so in this case a priority of 60, will be considered first and it tries to place the item in this collection. If it can't place the item in this collection, it will try the next collection with the second highest priority and try to place the item in that one. If it can't place in that one, it'll try the third, fourth, fifth, and so on. So the higher the priority, the sooner the item will be placed in this collection, assuming no filters block it. But we'll get to the filters in a second. We have the initial collection size. This is the size of the collection when we generate all of these slots. This will be ignored if you take a manually defined collection. Then we have item usage. Use item move to bank. So once you use an item inside of the inventory and if your bank is open, it will move the item to the bank instead of actually using the item. And the same goes for a vendor. If you have a vendor window open, you use an item. Instead of actually using it, it will try and sell it to the vendor. Uh, we've got some audio clips for certain actions, so swap, sort, and on add. The restrictions, this allows you to filter this inventory or this specific collection to only allow items of a certain type or certain specific um, filter options. So for example, we have type, and type must be, for example, equal to, we can specify, 
uh, equipable. So now only items of type that are equipable, so equipable inventory item types, are allowed to be stored in this inventory. We can add many to them, we can say match any of these filters or we want to match all of them, and we can even go as far as say we want to match the category and the category has to be equal to cloth. So we can only store items with the category of cloth in this specific inventory. And we can also do specific stats and rarities, etc. And then we have some restrictions. So you can restrict the inventory by weight. For example, all of the items combined in the inventory cannot exceed 100. You can consider this 100 kilograms or 100 pounds, it doesn't really matter. And we have can contain currencies, so maybe you have uh, a vendor or a bank or a loot window that you don't actually want to contain currencies, and you can restrict that. Um, if you actually want to be able to drop from a collection, so maybe you don't want to be able to drop from your bank or from your vendor. If we can use items directly from this collection, so maybe you have items in your bank and you don't actually want the item to be usable inside of the bank, uh, you can actually untick that here. Use item from references. This is if you have a reference referring to the item in this collection, should it be usable or not? So for example, if you have an item in your skill bar and your skill bar item refers to the inventory, is that reference usable? So assuming you have a reference in your skill bar and your item in the bank, you might not want to allow this because if a user is using an item inside of the skill bar that actually resides in the bank, um, it could use it whenever, so even if it's not near the bank, and it could have an infinite supply of items that are actually residing in the bank and not in the inventory. If we can drag in the collection, can put items inside of this collection, um, so we can actually make it read only if we want to. If we can stack items in this collection, if we disable this, it will try to unwrap all stacks. So if you pick up a stack of three apples, it will create three separate stacks of one. Um, and if we can unstack items inside of this collection, um, after they have been stacked. So obviously that's only possible if we can stack in the first place. So that's it for the collections and in the next tutorial we'll go over windows and triggers.